Nirvatra by April Thomas. Chapter 3 Attraction What is it which attracts a young man to a young woman? Is it her hair, skin, perfume smell, or how she looks at you as if the universe would be better off without you in it? Another question I will ask her before I end her life. He thought more to himself, pushing me off of a cliff. And for what? What was her reason? What gave her the strength and the drive to do such a thing? Foolish, I thought her people were naive and, well, let's be honest, and completely stupid, overly concerned with plants, animals, and all of the foolish things of nature comes this contemptuous beast, which decides to ruin my day by pushing me off a cliff. Just wait. When I get my hands on her, she will regret the day she was born. I will not let her get away with this. I genuinely detest how anyone can live in such a place filled with annoying and disgusting creatures like her and her people. Our dimension will be better off once they are all gone. He had been ranting for hours about this topic, struggling with the emotions swarming around his cold and bitter heart. Kalon wanted nothing more to do with her but found an odd spot profound within his heart, searching the deepest curiosities of life to understand her, as if she meant something more to him. But how? Kalon stopped and took a deep breath. A thrill filled his heart as the wind carried her scent toward him. He knew it all too well. Deep in his cold heart, he learned to smell her again, to be near her once more. Even if she succeeded in killing him, how can I rid my thoughts of her? This is too much. I need to put an end to this once and for all. She does not deserve to live. She must pay, and her people too. Or maybe I can keep her as my pet and dissect her body, mind, and spirit as I understand what drives me to the edge of insanity concerning her. He stopped in his tracks spotting movement just a few feet ahead. A young woman was collecting flowers in the nearby woods. She seemed so deep in her own world and did not notice his creeping presence. His heart leaped as it was confirmed. It was her. Beautiful shoulder-length dreads hung loose, and her smooth blue skin, soft green eyes, and plump lips brought back the image of her face right before she tried to kill him. Rage filled him again. The urge to push her from the highest cliff excited him. Now is my chance, maybe my only chance, to free me of her revolting way of intoxicating me. Time to put this all behind me and move on with my life, he thought. Kalon ducked behind some bushes as Nala turned in his direction. Lost in her tormenting thoughts, she did not sense the additional energy surrounding her. She debated returning to the spot where she pushed his body from off of the cliff. She thought it would only be respectable to mourn his death and give his spirit peace. Seeking forgiveness would be proper. Peace was something she craved more than anything. How would she find peace? It wasn't like her to do what she did. She fell to her knees in tears. I had to do it, she whispered, weeping. Kalan moved close enough to hear her sobbing. Oddly, this pained him. He could not approach her now. Everything inside of him wanted to flee. He moved back deeper into the woods, unsure of his next move. However, now that he has found her, he can't let her out of his sight. I will wait for the best time to catch her off guard. Confront her and put her out of my memory forever, he settled. It was not what he wanted in his heart but he found it to be the only agreement to ease the darkness in his mind. In the heat, he tried to follow her every move to understand everything about her. What did she, what made her smile, and whether anyone has her heart? He cursed himself once more, dreading his very own questions. What is happening to me? Why do I feel this way? He groaned. Maybe she has put some spell on me. He toiled remembering his parents' warning before sending him off on this dreadful mission. It was a great success until now, but everything seemed to be turning against him. 
including his mind. She stood, and he observed as she leaned against a tree, muttering words he could not understand. I knew it, he whispered. Dark temp dress, designed in every way to lure men to their deaths. Well, not this one. The last thing you will see is my face as I watch you fall off a cliff. You won't be so lucky, he promised. Nella finished collecting the herbs her mother needed in return to her people, unaware of who was following her. So deep in her hidden pain, she closed herself off from many of her senses and focused on helping her brother and mother. As she lay in bed tossing and turning, all she could think about was that brutal laugh. The only thought that brought her peace was making the firm decision that she would return to the spot where she pushed her enemy off the cliff and pay homage. She would ask his spirit for forgiveness even if he didn't deserve it. It was not her way to take a life. She could have simply left him there for the Creator to decide what was best for him. She was not raised to handle such matters in her own hands. Her brother and she were no longer in imminent danger. The poison had done its job. Their enemy was no longer a threat. Sleep finally came to her eyes as she drifted into a restful existence. In the morning, she would confront her mother, tell her what she had done, and leave to do what she could to repair the damage she caused to her own being. She rose earlier that morning, packed her bags, and sought out a private counsel with her mother. Nala quietly walked into her parents' hut. Her father had yet to return from his mission. Her mother slept peacefully, so she felt remorseful about waking her. Mama, she whispered, Nala, what torments you, daughter? Her mother questioned upon waking. Manina shifted her weight as she leaned in bed to speak with her daughter. Tell me, you have not been the same since you returned. Mama, I did something I never thought I could do, and I don't know if I did the right thing. What does your heart say? That I made a mistake. I took something into my own hands that is bigger than me, now I sigh. But I did it for my people. I had to, or we would all be in danger. She tried to rationalize. You are old enough to know what is right from what is wrong. If your heart is telling you that you are wrong, then you need to do what you can to seek healing and redemption so that you don't carry this onto your children, her mother advised. My children, she trailed off, killing her soulmate. She wasn't sure she would ever have children. Tell me what you did, Nala, her mother pressed gently. I will tell you when I return. I need to go, Nala answered, too ashamed to tell her mother everything. Where are you going? To seek forgiveness, Nal answered, recollecting herself. How long will you be? I'm not sure, but I will do my best to return as soon as I can. It's dangerous out there. You shouldn't leave right now. The Nava, they are hunting us now, Manina protested. I have weapons, Mama. We know this forest better than they do, she returned. Manina sighed. She knew once her daughter made up her mind. Nothing would stop her, especially in a matter like this. Mala was greatly troubled and knew better than to stop her from correcting a mistake. I know I cannot make you stay. Just be careful. You are my only daughter, and I don't want to lose you. I will. If Pop returns before me, please tell him. She had no clue what to tell her father. If he were home, she would not be able to leave so easily at least not without him. Just go and hurry. Be very mindful of your surroundings, her mother replied. Nala kissed her mother goodbye and left the hut quickly. It would take a today journey for her to return to the cliff. On her way, she would need to collect certain flowers to perform the forgiveness ceremony. Although she felt uneasy about leaving the safety of her village, she felt her heart lighten with the reassurance that she was doing the right thing by seeking forgiveness. As she started her journey, she thought about the dark stranger. Although they barely said anything to each other, she felt as if they had met before, maybe in another life, or perhaps he reminded her of someone. 
But more importantly, why was it that he was the one that was meant for her? How could this be? How could someone who is an enemy of her people be the very one that was chosen for her? Something had to be wrong. Universal mistake had to be made concerning them. However, the universe never makes mistakes. She walked for a few hours before coming to a rest by a cool stream of water. Resting her stuff on the banks, she decided to take a quick dip in the soothing waters. It was hard to resist. She took off most of her clothing, leaving just a breech cloth. Easing into the water, she smiled playfully, enjoying the abrupt coldness of the water. As her body settled, adapting to the water's temperature, she relaxed. Laying back in the water, she let loose her long dark hair and became one with her surroundings. Her senses reached out, greeting all of nature's blessings. The spirits of the plants and animals nearby came to greet her, whispering words of wisdom and knowledge, granting her an understanding of life and the universe. This is how the Nirvatrans learned about life, healing, and death. This was how they understood the universe and the laws of life and nature. She sunk deeper into her teachings when suddenly, a warning from a nearby animal spirit of the sky spoke these words to her soul. He is watching, he warned. Nala jumped up, searching around her for a person or whatever was watching her but saw no one. Feeling uneasy, she quickly made her way out of the stream and back to where she had placed her stuff. Upon reaching the bank, she noticed her things had been messed with. Her bag had been searched through. Is anyone there? She questioned, grabbing her top to cover her bare chest. Although she could sense that someone was hiding, she could not understand if they were a friend or foes. His presence was familiar. However, unsettling, she quickly gathered her stuff, placing her items back in her sack. Realizing that some food had been taken, she relaxed slightly. Maybe it was just a hungry animal, she thought. As she stood, she gasped, observing a large footprint. Obviously, it was not an animal. This footprint belonged to a man. 